हृदय कमल मध्ये राजित निर्विकल्प सद सदखिल भेदा तीत मेक स्वूप प्रकृति विकृति शून्य द दक्षिणेश्वर काली टेम्पल इन कोलकाता य ऑन द बैंक ऑफ होली रिवर गंगा आर द टेम्पल्स ऑफ माँ भवतारिणी काली ट्वेल्व शिवा टेम्पल्स एंड द राधा कांता टेम्पल दिस बींग भगवान श्री रामकृष्णाज लीला स्थान द स्टेज ऑफ हिज डिवाइन प्ले इट हैज बिकम अ स्पेशल प्लेस ऑफ पिलग्रिमेज फॉर द डिवोटीज ऑल ओवर द वर्ल्ड वंस अ यंग कपल वॉज सिटिंग ऑन द स्टेप्स ऑफ द पंचवटी एट दक्षिणेश्वर दे हैड रिसेंटली लॉस देअर फाइव इयर ओल्ड सन द यंग मैन हैड ब्रॉट हिज डिस्ट्रेस्ड वाइफ यर टू कंसोल हर देर वन इयर ओल्ड डॉटर वॉज इन हर आर्म्स सून द लिटिल गर्ल बिगैन टू क्राई फ्रॉम हंगर द ग्रीफ स्ट्रिकन मदर हैड फॉगॉटन टू कैरी मिल्क वाइल द फादर हरी टू फाइंड सम द मदर ट्राइड हर बेस्ट टू पैसीफाई द बेबी बट इट वॉज ऑल इन वेन द बेबीज वेल्स ग्रू लाउडर एंड लाउडर फीलिंग हेल्पलेस द मदर लेड हर डाउन ऑन वन ऑफ द स्टेप्स ऑफ द पंचवटी एंड वॉट वंडर द बेबी काम डाउन इंस्टेंटली वॉज द बेबी रियली क्राइंग फॉर मिल्क और वॉज इट फॉर अ टच ऑफ दिस होली ग्राउंड सैंक्टिफाइड नॉट वेरी लॉन्ग एगो बाय श्री रामकृष्णा एट हिज डिवाइन फीट her future life was to be gloriously dedicated this yearning for panchavati continued all through her life her great grandfather was shri navagopal ghosh one of the close householder disciples of shri ramakrishna the girl born with this divine inheritance was renuka basu it is said that the course of a great life is preordained by providence for it was this baby girl renuka who grew up to be the most revered pravrajika moksha pranamata ji the second president of shri sharada math and ramakrishna sharada mission on 9th december 1915 renuka basu was born to a middle class family in north kolkata her parents brajendranath and pankaj kumari both were very pious and devoted once Renu accompanied her father to Kakurgachi Yogodhyang. After having darshan in the shrine, she sat on the steps by the pond. Everything about the place made her happy. Soon a devotee came there with pious prasad. One spoonful was enough to fill Renu's tiny hands to the brim. Of course, she would have liked more, but with her father being present, she suppressed the longing. Sri Ramakrishna fulfilled her inner desire and the gentleman offered her another serving. Moksha Prana Mata ji often recalled this event fondly remembering it as Thakur's blessings. When Renu was just 3 to 4 years old a sadhu had come to their house for alms. She followed him unnoticed to the distant woods where he stayed. She keenly observed how he lived and what he did this curiosity about the mendicant way of life even as a child indicates a strong desire to lead a life of sanyasini ya devi sarvabhuteshu shraddha rupena samsthita namastasya namastasya Renu's father was a man of high principles, committed to noble ideas and modern in his outlook. Her mother was very intelligent and devoted to the family. A calm and steady nature was her special characteristic. 
there was no school for girls in their neighborhood as renu's father firmly believed that the education of women was essential for the progress of a country he established a free school in a library with the help of his highly educated friends in this school renu met a new classmate asha who later became revered pravrajika mukti pranamata ji the first general secretary of shri sharada math providence brought together these future sanyasini sisters even if for a brief spell when renu was in 5th grade her father passed away her mother along with the children moved to her father's home in raja bazar here renu completed the rest of her education at the victoria institute her uncle dr satyesh chandra mitra was an initiated disciple of the holy mother who played a vital role in directing her life to its destined goal satyesh mama would frequently visit belur math and was well acquainted with the monks there he often took young renu along and thus she had the good fortune of meeting some of the direct disciples of sri ramakrishna like revered shivanand ji maharaj abhedanand ji maharaj akhandanand ji maharaj subodhanand ji maharaj and vidyananand ji maharaj ata ji never forgot her first visit to belur math whenever shri narrated her experience it felt as if it happened yesterday she recalled i saw a monk he was strolling along the ganga from the bale tree to the old temple satyesh mama said touch his feet he is swami ji's disciple virajanand ji maharaj uncle then took me to shivanand ji maharaj as soon as i offered my pranams he asked me how are you ma fine i answered even though our conversation never went beyond this in all our subsequent meetings his words always filled me with deep joy renu didi passed the entrance examination in the first division and enrolled in victoria college for graduation it was year 1935 vidyananand ji maharaj would often visit belur math in connection with the construction of sri ramakrishna's new temple one day on meeting renu didi and her mother he asked them to visit the math on the auspicious occasion of ram navami on ram navami he initiated them in the meditation room behind the old shrine after the initiation ceremony he asked them to bring two fruits from the store room next door he told them this is your guru dakshina give these fruits to me mata ji further recalled after the initiation he told me from now on you have none to call your own except shri thakur and shri ma at first renu didi was startled to hear that she had none else to call her own but the very next moment she knew that these words had left a deep impression on her mind these infallible words from the guru were a clear indicator of renu didi's future and their profound impact is constantly reflected in her life pranamami muhur muhur In due course of time she completed her MA with ancient Indian history and culture as a subject There were now efforts to marry her to a suitable groom As she was firm in her decision to not marry she successfully persuaded her mother and remained single So her younger sister was married The young bride left behind the complete works of Swami Vivekananda which she had received as a wedding gift Renu Didi would shut herself in a room and read these books day and night. Her mother's repeated calls to come for meals went unheeded. In particular, she read Karma Yoga again and again and thus gained clarity on her future course. She decided to work voluntarily as a teacher. At the same time, Nirvedanand ji Maharaj advised her to go to Nivedita school. and served there renu didi then went to udbodhan and met bodhatma nanji maharaj the then secretary of nivedita school in 1946 
With approval from her family, Renu Didi left home for the Nivedita school. This opportunity proved to be a turning point in Renu Didi's life. As fate would have it, the previous headmistress of the Nivedita school along with some teachers had left the school. Bijli Didi, who later became Pravrajika Vidya Pranamata ji in future, was the only teacher left in the school. In these circumstances, Renu Didi was appointed as the headmistress. Under her able leadership, thorough guidance, loving nature, and most importantly, her spirit of complete surrender to the divine will, Nivedita School soon came to be recognized as one of the leading educational institutions in Kolkata. Premisha Nanji Maharaj wrote to Renu Didi, Dear Mother, Sri Sri Thakur bestows endless grace on you. That's why you are so dear to us. The very sight of you has raised such high hopes in me that I rejoice at the prospects that through you we may at last give effect to our long cherished vow of bringing about women's emancipation. Ya Devi In the year 1948, Bodhatma Nanji Maharaj told Renu Didi that Lakshmi Didi, who later became Pravrajika Shraddha Pranamata ji, was coming from Varanasi. She was teaching at the Annie Basin College there and had higher qualifications. He said she naturally deserved the post of the headmistress and asked Renu Didi, in that case, what would be her plans? She said that she would continue to live there. But what will you do here? Maharaj persisted. Renu Didi replied, I will stay here, even if I am given the work of a sweeper. Such was Renu Didi, completely selfless and dedicated. Shraddha Prana Mataji would fondly remember, I had met Renu Didi a year before joining the Nivedita school. In our very first meeting, we felt as if we had always known each other. Thus, we shared an intimate bond when I came to the school. In the same year, Renu Didi, Lakshmi Didi and Bijli Didi went to Haridwar during the Durga Puja holidays and stayed at the Kankal Sevashram. They were blessed to get the holy company of Dhruvatma Nanji Maharaj, Atula Nanji Maharaj and Jagada Nanji Maharaj. There, Renu Didi and Bijli Didi were busy stringing masses of rose garlands for the puja and did not get time to bathe in the Ganga on the holy days of Ashtami and Navami. But to the Karma Yogini Renu Didi, there was no difference between bathing in the holy Ganga and making garlands for the puja. After Kankhal, they went to Kashi and were blessed to spend some time in the holy presence of Achala Nanji Maharaj, Shankara Nanji Maharaj, Shanta Nanji Maharaj and Omkara Nanji Maharaj. In the year 1949, Bodhatma Nanji Maharaj fell ill and Brahmachari Matrika Chaitanya was appointed as secretary of the Nivedita school. Unfortunately, he passed away. Thus, Renu Didi had to shoulder both the responsibilities of secretary as well as the headmistress. In this context, the then Assistant General Secretary of Ramakrishna Math and Mission, Revered Vireshwara Nanji Maharaj wrote to her, You have been appointed Officiating Secretary. For the present, let this arrangement suffice. We have full faith in your ability to run the school with the cooperation of others. Thakur himself will come to your aid if you advance in your work without any hesitation.
with her perseverance dedication and natural leadership renu didi successfully shouldered the responsibility revered virajanand ji maharaj the then president of ramakrishna math and mission wrote to her i am very happy to hear about your steadfastness unselfish work and loving personality you have dedicated your life for shri thakur ma and swami ji's work i pray that they always remain with you remember the more you surrender yourself as an instrument for their work the more inspiration and strength you will derive asha didi who later became pravraji ka mukti prana mata ji was running the sarada ashram at land zone road in kolkata it was an ashram for women aspiring for the establishment of women's math as per the vision of swami vivekananda in 1950 These young women joined the work at Nivedita school. Virajanand ji Maharaj wrote to them sending his blessings. In this union of the two groups I can well see the beginning of a far reaching good. Many more women from different religions and countries will also come. Those who are far away will also join together to be united in one tremendous field of action. you must see to it that those who come may all be accepted in the fold that unitedly you may carry on together a great responsibility has been entrusted to you on 27th december 1953 on the auspicious occasion of holy mother's birthday revered shankaranand ji maharaj the then president of ramakrishna math and mission initiated seven women aspirants into brahmacharya renu didi was one of them premesha nanji maharaj got this news from belur math and also through renu didi's letter he wrote to her from sargachi what a glorious future you are going to have the very thought elates me ma renu your name will go down in history a new era for women is starting You seven brahmacharinis will be the torch bearers. Do you know what a special place you have obtained in the history of the Ramakrishna movement? Always be aware of your abilities and strength. On 2nd December 1954, on the auspicious occasion of the Holy Mother's birth centenary, Sri Sarada Math was established. This was a historical and unprecedented event swami vivekananda's dream of having an independent mat for women was thus fulfilled renu didi had the blessed opportunity to perform shri ramakrishna's worship on this day leaving behind the busy schedule of the nivedita school she now came to stay in this newly established mat in the formative years sri sarada mat was a deserted place There was not even a boundary wall between the river bank and the mat premises. After a full day of hard work, Renu Didi and Bijli Didi would spend the entire night doing japam on the mat veranda. How still and unmoving they would be, exactly like statues, and yet they would always be present at Mangal Arti, the dawn vesper service, enthusiastic and cheerful. Renu Didi was efficient and flawless in whatever she did. Her loving worship of Thakur was indeed a sight to see. Bharati Prana Mata ji used to say, "No one can adorn Thakur as beautifully as Renu." Good fruits for offering to Sri Rama Krishna were not available in the local market. So, Renu Didi used to walk to the Baranagar market to buy the fruits. On 1st January 1959 on the auspicious occasion of Holy Mother's birthday Renu Didi along with seven others received final monastic vows in the old shrine at Belur Math She received the name Pravrajika Moksha Prana thus Sri Sarada Math became a gathering of many dedicated and unique noble lives perhaps This was to be the start of a new chapter 
in the history of organized monasticism for women great souls forged their own path in life as directed by an unseen divine force such also was the life of pravrajika moksha prana mata ji soon after a governing body of trustees for sri sarada math was formed and entire administration was transferred to these sanyasinis on 9th september 1959 by the belur math authorities revered bharati prana mata ji became the first president and led the organization while revered moksha prana mata ji became one of the trustees in 1960 the ramakrishna sarada mission was formed to commence educational cultural and social services among women and children moksha prana mata ji became the first vice president of the math and the mission in the same year vivekananda vidya bhavan the first branch center was started in damdam kolkata the construction of the college building was completed under the able guidance of mata ji despite the lack of proper electricity labor money and water she accomplished this task the neighborhood communities were thrilled and exclaimed mata ji has transformed the land into a veritable paradise mata ji had studied homeopathy and so she ran a charitable dispensary for the residents in and around dakshineshwar in addition to treating the physical problems of the patients her loving nature and empathy also gave them mental comfort and this drew many people to the math mata ji would personally visit the neighboring houses and inquire about everyone's health when necessary she sent milk food blankets and prasad for them ya devi sarva day a woman took some medicine for her baby who was suffering from pneumonia in the afternoon mata ji went to see the child and found him lying on a piece of coarse mat immediately she came back to the mat folded up her mattress put it in a rickshaw and took it there for the baby the young postmaster of the dakshineshwar post office passed away in a street accident his mother was mourning the death of her only child Mata ji would go to meet his mother carrying with her a packet of prasad soon drawn by her love the bereaved mother began visiting sri sarada math and in time overcame her grief mata ji personally took interest in many activities of the math she would also go to nivedita school or cit ashram for some work or to conduct classes and would return late in the evening Bharati Prana Mata ji would ask her to do the evening aarti. Mata ji would immediately freshen up and go to the shrine. While performing the aarti, she would become one with it and rise to the level of higher consciousness. Mata ji gave great importance to meditation and austerity. Sometimes she would take the brahmacharinis to the Dakshineshwar Kali temple in the afternoon. and asked them to meditate in the panchavati she used to say this is the holy place of shri ramakrishna's divine play and sadhana it will be very beneficial if you meditate on his divine life here in 1962 the ramakrishna sarada mission shiksha mandir was founded at barui para for the first 10 years till 1972 Mata ji served as its secretary this was in addition to all her other duties transforming this barren land into a school was no easy task mata ji worked tirelessly to create an environment 
conducive to nurturing young budding minds she visited many homes urging the families to send their children to the school a kindergarten a primary school and an institute for mother teachers training was started mataji maintained a unique relationship with every child keeping in mind their inclination and disposition she gave them advice and shaped their life on the occasion of saraswati puja she would serve the children a feast of puri aloo dum fried snacks chutney and payas very often teachers would send unmanageable and naughty students to mata ji it surprised them how easily she brought them under control when asked the reason for it she would say i treat each child with love and respect commenting on the love with which mata ji nurtured the students eminent historian nimai sadan basu said mata ji is the perfect example of an ideal teacher as envisioned by sister nivedita the 10 years mata ji spent at barui para were not in the school alone she also had warm ties with the local women she founded the janani sangha with these ladies twice a week she used to conduct classes for them on every monday at the house of one member of janani sangha by rotation and on another day at the barui para center the small amount donated by the members was spent on the welfare of the needy in the evenings spiritually inclined ladies of the neighborhood seeking holy company would come to mata ji under her guidance they started the sarada mani school for under privileged kids the gentle exterior of this mother figure concealed a fearless spirit within in those days barui para was sparsely populated often there would be no electricity and burglary was a common issue fans telephone wires and utensils would be stolen from the center whenever she sensed any danger mata ji boldly came out of her room and either confronted the burglars or chased them away mata ji was loving by nature but when the situation arose she would verily become durga once when the school was in full swing mata ji heard an uproar and on approaching the gate she saw a few naxal boys armed with bombs and pipe guns trying to enter the school she ordered that the gate should remain closed the naxals threatened her saying that they would blow up the school first kill me then kill the others and then blow up the school was mata ji's spirited reply confronted by her daring and forceful personality the menacing attitude of the intruders soon subsided and they withdrew abhi hi abhi hi is the mantra proclaimed in the upanishads swami vivekananda also quotes brahman is verily fearlessness meditating on this fearlessness a spiritual aspirant starts imbibing it and we can witness its strength manifesting in mata ji's life from this incident ya devi sarvabhuteshu shakti rupena samsthita namastasya 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 namo namaha namo namaha amidst the busy schedule of teaching maintaining regular contact with the guardians and devotees and other pressing activities the undercurrent of spiritual endeavor for god realization flowed silently steadily in her she frequently visited dakshineshwar at dawn and in the month of vaishak she would walk to the nearby temple to worship shiva daily This work at Barui Para for 10 years was merely a glimpse of all that would be gloriously accomplished by Mata ji in the future. In the last illness of Bharati Prana Mata ji, Moksha Prana Mata ji lovingly and tirelessly served her for the last 3 days and 3 nights. On the final day, 
Mataji went to her room for 10 minutes. Just then, a sanyasini came there to call Mataji. Seeing Mataji sitting with her eyes closed, the sanyasini requested Mataji to rest for some more time. Mataji exclaimed, "What are you saying? Very soon Thakur, Ma, and Swami ji will come to take Bharati Prana Mata ji with them. How can I miss that? Come, let's go and experience their divine presence." Incidents like these make us aware of the spiritual realm in which Mata ji's mind soared. In 1973, after the Mahasamadhi. of pravraji ka bharati pranamata ji moksha pranamata ji was made the president of sri sarada math it was the auspicious day of annapurna puja mata ji accepted this responsibility as sri ramakrishna's will once premesha nanji maharaj had written to her we must always regard ourselves as instruments in the hands of thakur we only do what he gets done by us In all our deeds the only aim is to please Sri Ramakrishna with this single objective in mind she undertook the service of the sangha revered moksha prana mata ji's life is truly a shining example of this attitude of self surrender mata ji always remembered the advice given by premesha nanji maharaj if your mind is fully absorbed in the contemplation of shri ramakrishna he will solve all your problems there is no doubt about it she had to face a variety of problems at the helm of the sangha but by thakur's grace she could successfully overcome everything that came her way after bharati prana mata ji's mahasamadhi everyone in the math was disheartened but moksha prana mata ji's affectionate conduct the power of her austerities and careful management succeeded in alleviating their grief and making the math vibrant again the number of sanyasinis and brahmacharinis also increased many more devotees started coming in 1973 on the auspicious occasion of rakhi purnima mata ji started initiating devotees although mata ji was the president she used to stay in a small room she would do everything there eat sleep work and meet devotees her well regulated and restrained life was an ideal example for all monastics and householders alike she was personally interested in the welfare of all the people associated with the math her care was not limited only to the inmates but also to the poor rickshaw drivers the sweepers the gardeners and the caretakers of the cows mata ji always stood by them in case of any difficulty just like in holy mother we see both love and service exemplified in the life of mata ji as holy mother's representative she lived all her life for the welfare and happiness of others ya devi sarvabhuteshu matrurupe Mata ji was mother to all young and old alike once a small girl entered mata ji's room and asked what are you doing she replied i am signing the letters the girl again asked what that meant mata ji told her that she was writing her name on the letters before posting them immediately the girl asked what is your name mata ji said i am mata ji the girl replied everybody knows that you are mata ji but what is your real name they kept going back and forth on this multiple times but each time mata ji emphatically responded that her name was indeed mata ji though this conversation was a light hearted one we see mata ji gives a glimpse of her identity as a mother she felt everyone to be her own child she had the same motherly attitude 
while instructing her disciples on spiritual topics that is why disciples looked upon her more as a mother than as a guru once mata ji was telling us thakur would climb up to the roof top of the kutti and call oh where are you all come here i am dying to see you thakur's call to the devotees is the most real thing in the world what more can people want if god himself calls them to him the devotees felt that mata ji was actually hearing this call of thakur and was conveying it to us mata ji gave a godward turn to the lives of innumerable people she would not differentiate between men and women devotees many men devotees would insist on receiving initiation from mata ji mata ji also had many eminent personalities among her disciples mata ji showed them due respect her love however was the same for everyone some of mata ji's notable disciples include novelist sanjeev chattopadhyay and harsh datta historian nimai sadhan basu researcher shankari prasad basu and many other renowned artists sculptors journalists singers dancers and scientists she also had many foreign devotees what was it that drew the devotees to her was it her motherly love or was it for seeking her blessings as a guru or was it her divinity actually it was a combination of all of these bharati prana mata ji planted the seed of sri sarada math and the ramakrishna sarada mission while moksha prana mata ji nurtured it into a glorious tree with branches spread all over india this period of 26 years from 1973 to 1999 saw a major expansion of sri sarada math starting from pune in 1975 and continuing to bangalore shilagram thakur nagar gangarampur indore and varanasi to name a few a new temple at dakshineshwar was constructed in 1981 an english biannual magazine samvit and a quarterly bengali one nibodhatta were also started to spread the ideals of the ramakrishna movement mata ji's prominent characteristic was her focus on spirituality as president she insisted that spirituality and god realization always be the top priorities for all the inmates time and again she stressed that work should not be an excuse for relaxing sadhana and at the same time all the assigned work must be done properly most revered amal prana mata ji general secretary of sri sarada math shared her experience she said when i was a brahmacharini it was my duty to clean mata ji's room as i was about to complete the work mata ji entered the room and said the way you have cleaned this room tells me about the quality of japa you did today morning i was surprised and started wondering what was wrong i had done japa at dawn as usual i then thought there might be something wrong with my cleaning understanding my confusion mata ji said look at the dust in the corners and behind the door and window seals you should do work with the same concentration as you do japa i had only read that work is worship but mata ji actually lived it she took the broom from my hand and showed me exactly how the cleaning should be done she kept on cleaning the room and like a fool i just kept watching it did not strike me that i should take the broom from her hand and do the cleaning it did not matter to her she was always very forgiving of our faults and weaknesses it was this loving attitude of hers that made all the newcomers feel like they are at home it is difficult to put into words exactly how much we learned from mata ji i can only say that we learned what real spirituality is by seeing her life ya devi sarvabhuteshu kshanti ru
वंस वाइल इन वृंदावन माता जी वेंट टू द बांके बिहारी टेम्पल विथ विद्या प्रणा माता जी एंड वेदांत प्रणा माता जी इन साइड द टेम्पल माता जी स्टार्टेड से लुक लुक हाउ लविंगली दे आर टॉकिंग अबाउट श्री कृष्ण देर इज अ डिवाइन लाइट सराउंडिंग देम माता जी वॉज इन एन एग्जैल्टेड स्टेट नो बडी एल्स सॉ एनी थिंग बट माता जी हैड द विजन ऑफ द गोपीज इन द टेम्पल माता जी वंस स्टेड इन हरिद्वार फॉर अ मंथ अलॉन्ग विथ अ ब्रह्मचारिणी शी वंस वेंट टू विजिट द हरकी पौरी घाट ऑन द गंगा आफ्टर ऑफरिंग प्रणाम्स टू द सीक्रेट रिवर एंड विजिटिंग नियर बाय टेम्पल्स दे वेंट टू बाय अ फ्लावाज फॉर ठाकुर माता जी आज द ब्रह्मचारिणी फॉर अ बैग टू कीप द वाज बट इन हरी शी हैड फॉर गॉट इन टू ब्रिंग वन माता जी जेंटली रिब्यूक था ऑन द वे बैग You have come to become a sadhu. It won't do if you let go of your common sense and stop being practical. Swami ji did not want such monks. You should always carry some money and a bag any time you go out. Even though Mata ji was a sanyasini of the highest order, she was keenly aware of the practicalities of daily life. She would always encourage everyone to perform every task cheerfully and without hesitation she would be upset if anyone said they didn't want to do something or if they felt incapable of doing certain work she repeatedly stressed remember we are here to give and not to take give away everything that you have the sanyasinis and brahmacharinis never felt like leaving the mat and go to the other centers for work due to the fear of missing out on the spiritual atmosphere and the love and holy company of senior sanyasinis but mata ji emphatically asked do you think that thakur and ma are not present at the other places you have joined the order by their will so now why are you feeling sorry to go to other centers for their work if there was a lack of manpower for some reason mata ji would send her personal attendant to help The sangha is Thakur's body. She tried to imbibe this faith in everyone. Mata ji delighted in all the things that gave pure joy and happiness. On the auspicious days like Dashera and Shivratri, all the inmates would gather in Mata ji's room and celebrate by singing bhajans. The atmosphere would be filled with pure joy every time after the celebration. Mata ji would treat everyone to some nice feast. Mata ji herself believed and ensured that the worship of Sri Ram Krishna must be flawless. She cautioned everyone, feel the living presence of Thakur, Ma and Swami ji in the shrine and serve them like your near and dear ones. Once Mata ji scolded a sanyasini for roughly cleaning the photo of Sri Ram Krishna. She exclaimed wipe it gently you know how soft and sensitive his body is in a similar incident while offering flowers in the shrine mata ji remarked to the sanyasini there do you think holy mother is a doll you have used so many pins for draping her sari mata ji then removed some pins and showed how the sari should be draped she would take utmost care in offering the best flowers to thakur so in the evening she would go to the garden with a small bucket of water and a torch she would remove the bugs and insects from the buds and put them in the bucket if a devotee asked mata ji what they should bring for her from the place of pilgrimage her prompt reply would be i don't need anything by mother's grace i have everything instead i will be happy if you meditate on the presiding deity there and try to experience the holy atmosphere of the place everything in the mat belongs to thakur so mata ji never tolerated any inefficient use of resources she was very judicious about everything she used the blank inside of old envelopes for drafting new letters if a letter had to be handed over to someone she would use an old envelope and write the name and address on its clean bag when mata ji conducted classes on shri ramakrishna leela prasanga she brought the words to life 
we could feel thakur's presence she also repeatedly told all devotees shri ramakrishna holy mother and swami ji are our final refuge never forget this inspired by reading swami ji's karma yog in her youth mata ji's life unfolded to be a perfect example of that ideal from worshiping thakur in the shrine to cleaning the garden she did every work cheerfully as an offering to shri ramakrishna in her free time mata ji would work in the garden with her own hands she would water the plants till the end she was fiercely independent and always led by example never by instruction whenever any letter was to be sent to the branch centers from the headquarters instead of signing as the president of math she would sign as sevika of the math she was very frank and immediately corrected any mistake observed in anybody's behavior she said one must first be established in the truth and then alone the strength of character would be built mata ji used to say that name and fame are obstructions to spiritual life and she always did her work unnoticed by the public eye devotees used to visit mata ji wherever she was whether in dakshineshwar or at some other branch center those seeking initiation would be given initiation all earnest seekers would receive mata ji's love and affection equally be it rich or poor educated or illiterate young or old indian or foreigner even birds and animals received the same love from her many devotees have experienced mata ji's love a devotee recalls all our worries would fly away just by looking at mata ji's serene face in a glance she would read all our innermost thoughts and solve our problems with motherly love and concern while taking her leave our minds would be uplifted her mere presence would renew our faith in thakur ma and swami ji mata ji was a veritable dynamo of spirituality her exalted spiritual state was second only to her all encompassing and all embracing motherhood in her last days mata ji's only sadhana was uninterrupted service of devotees even against all personal comforts her health started deteriorating in 1997 despite that she maintained her hobby of reading she also liked to listen to bhajans when she visited delhi in 1998 she was singing to herself a song judai te chai kothai judai she was heard uttering when shall i go home if someone said to her yes mata ji within few days you will go back to dakshineshwar she would reply is sarda math my home is that my final resting place if then somebody understood the deep meaning and protested you cannot go now why are you so eager to go mata ji would respond with a smile this body is old now i have been here for such a long time now it is time to go back she was always aware of her true abode medical tests revealed cancer everyone realized that the end was near yet she was unruffled by this diagnosis ignoring all physical suffering she maintained her daily schedule and fulfilled all her duties no one would believe that she was sick on seeing her cheerfulness and enthusiasm while interacting with the monastics and answering the questions put forth by the devotees she had an extraordinary tolerance for pain she never spoke about her health when asked about it she would always say that she was doing well on 18th july 1999 she initiated devotees for the last time within a few days on 9th august on swami ramakrishna nanda ji's birthday she suddenly became very ill She was admitted to a nursing home on 11th August till 29th August 
there was no marked improvement on 29th when shraddha prana mata ji came to meet her she expressed her desire to return to the mat however that night her breathing trouble increased when asked about her suffering she said now only one more day on 30th august the doctors were trying their utmost to alleviate her sufferings even in that condition mata ji inquired about the doctors well being and told them to take prasad none of the treatments seemed to work any more at 2:25 am revered pravrajika moksha prana mata ji entered into maha samadhi for 26 long years as the president of sri sarada mat mata ji gave her all to propagate shri thakur ma and swami ji's message she kept her mind above the level of body consciousness at the final moment calmly discarding the deceased body like a used cloth mata ji merged into brahman the all pervading consciousness mata ji's personality was as exalted and multifaceted as it was unfathomable and all encompassing on one hand she was sacrifice and renunciation personified leading a life of severe austerity of a deeply meditative nature on the other hand she was a highly efficient and dedicated worker tireless and perfect in the execution of all that she did with her high intellectual ability and a scholarly bent of mind coexisted a remarkable humility dedication to service and an attitude of self surrender the lives of such great souls do not end with their physical death they inspire and serve us as a guiding light to us even today शेषे <laughs>